Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Block 10, Episode 1, The Cardiovascular System. After viewing this episode, participants will review the normal function of the cardiovascular system. Participants will review the changes to the cardiovascular system as a result of aging. And finally, participants will review the assessment and evaluation of the cardiovascular system. The normal characteristics of the heart is to provide a pump to deliver blood throughout the body. Um, a heart that works properly will um, provide perfusion to the brain and all the other vital organs that can be seen by normal mentation, normal skin perfusion, which should be warm and dry. If there's any sort of abnormality, you will have decreased perfusion that can be seen in the tissues or by dysfunction in the other organ systems. The general flow of the blood as it returns back to the heart is through the right atrium. Um, this is then delivered to the right ventricle which pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Um, this occurs through the pulmonary arteries into the capillary beds of the lung. From there the blood is oxygenated and returns through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and then into the left ventricle which pumps blood out through the aorta into the rest of the arteries throughout the rest of the body to perfuse the tissues in. Um, after the blood returns from the capillaries, it once again returns to the right atrium. The systolic function of the heart is measured through the systolic portion of the blood pressure. This is the heart's ability to pump against resistance. The diastolic portion is the resting pressure of the heart when the ventricles relax and fill up with blood. The heart serves as a pump for perfusion. It supplies organs with oxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood flows from the right side of the heart to the lungs. Oxygenated blood flows from the lungs to the left side of the heart and out to the rest of the body. Abnormalities with the heart will result in decreased organ function and poor perfusion. With aging, there's decreased cardiac reserve. Um, so whenever there's increased demand for the heart to actually provide oxygen to tissues um, with aging there's um, increased stress on the heart part of this is through what we call systolic uh, the systolic function of the heart which is the ability for the heart to pump um, as your tissue ages there's increased scarring as well as in some people ischemic heart disease that prevents the heart from properly functioning. The other problem is your muscle tissue becomes less compliant, which means that um, it doesn't relax all the way and allow for full filling of the heart. Arterial sclerosis is when there is plaque buildup within the coronary arteries. And this is partly an event that occurs cumulatively through aging um, there are certain factors that put you at more risk for it, some of those being genetic as well as dietary, and then your underlying exercise activity, which helps to build reserve. Um, as you age, the, the plaques tend to accumulate, and they initially begin as fatty plaques that begin to calcify. And as this occurs, it puts you at increased risk for having what we call a coronary event. With age, there's a decreased cardiac reserve. There's stiffening of the associated cardiac and smooth muscle. There's increased prevalence in ischemic and other heart-related diseases. And there's buildup of plaque in the vessels. The general exam of the heart consists of one visualizing the chest to look for any um, abnormal movement of the chest wall, um, auscultating the chest to listen for heart sounds. There should be an S1 and S2 heart sound. If there are additional heart sounds, this may represent underlying pathology. In addition to the chest exam, you can also assess jugular vein or assess for jugular venous distension, um, as well as for any carotid bruise. Um, in addition to this, we also assess the pulse, and what we're looking for is the strength of the pulse, the rate of the pulse and any um, irregularity between the various pulses that are transmitted through the arteries. In addition to this, we look at the skin as well. It should be warm and dry. 
if there is decreased capillary refill or the, an abnormality in the perfusion, there, the skin may be cool or clammy. And the pre-hospital assessment of the cardiovascular system, you, you basically want to make sure that you start with the, the bottom end, um, and that would be BLS-wise. Uh, good blood pressure, pulse rate, a good history of, the, of what's been bothering the patient, and um, and you also want to then at the advanced stage start to look at your EKG and your 12 lead, which is important to make sure that you get these done as quickly as possible if you feel that there's a possibility of a STEMI or something along those lines. The number one tool is, of course, your, your brain and your ears. Um, the stethoscope is your primary tool in terms of looking or in terms of assessing the uh, general function of the, the heart. Um, in addition to this, we have the tools of the cardiac monitor um, as well as EKG that's available. This allows us to look for any sort of ischemic event occurring. Um, in addition to this, vital signs are particularly important in terms of giving us a general idea of how the heart is performing. A typical presentation, somebody will call EMS um, and have a, a complaint of maybe chest pain and, and, and maybe some shortness of breath. They may also be complaining of dizziness or maybe have passed out. When we get those, uh, we obviously will do a, a basic assessment to begin with and get a good blood pressure and a good pulse, a good set of vital signs, and then uh, do an EKG and a 12 lead, make sure that we don't have any, um, any acute changes. A very good physical assessment and then also a good HPI will give you a lot of information about when this happened. So you want to make sure that you, you can find out if there's any other symptoms, you know, when did the chest pain start, what does the chest pain feel like, where is it, um, did you have any shortness of breath along with that, did you, have you had recent dyspnea on exertion, which can tell if there's been maybe some coronary artery disease that's been building up over time, do you have any PND or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, you wake up short of breath all the time. Those are things that are going to help you to, to clue in on maybe where this is coming from and is it an MI or is it, it CHF or some of the other things that could possibly be causing problems. And then a good uh, ECG and a 12 lead and uh, then treat as needed. Assessment of the cardiovascular system includes visualization of the chest for DCAP BTLS, auscultation of the chest listening for heart and lung sounds, Obtain a baseline rate and quality of vital signs. Evaluate the skin for color, moisture, turgor, and other items. Assess medical history and events leading up to the problem. ALS providers should evaluate a 12-lead EKG. A few pearls for managing a cardiac patient. It's, it's good to make sure that you stay in tune with the possibility that they may not present like the book says. A lot of people sometimes will have chest pain, sometimes will not have chest pain. Uh, they may or may not have other things that go along with it like nausea, vomiting, and shortness of breath. So it's good to keep an open mind and make sure that you're always kind of thinking that it could happen. Um, on the other hand, you don't want to also go overboard and make everything into the worst case scenario. So keeping an open mind is, is a very good way to kind of make sure you're going to cover all the bases. Pearls for responders includes keeping an open mind. Not every cardiovascular emergency will present like the textbook, especially in the older adult. After viewing this episode, participants will review the normal function of the cardiovascular system. Participants will review the changes to the cardiovascular system as a result of aging. And finally, participants will review the assessment and evaluation of the cardiovascular system.